Welcome into Courtside Seats with Kroger, a Charlotte Hornets podcast. Here he is, Chris Kroger. All right, episode 19 of Courtside Seats, and we're coming to you from Dallas, and we're getting ready to close out the preseason. We'll actually be getting ready for the regular season by the time we get this thing started, and we're in the hotel room of one Kemba Walker. Kemba, how you doing, man? Good, man. Appreciate it. I'm good. Okay. Well, we're getting ready, man. This is uh, year number eight for you. So, is that crazy? It is. It's, it's kind of surreal, actually. Um, yeah, eight. It just, I mean, it's two away from ten. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, time it flew flew by. But it's exciting. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not many... People could say they've been in the NBA for eight years. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm excited. It's wild. I was talking to – we had Marvin on the podcast a few weeks ago. And, you know, this is year 14 for him. Yeah. 18 for Tony. Tony. And it's just crazy when you stop. Like, I think people, fans especially, I get it. We put superstars and mm-hmm. we talk about all-time greats and all that stuff. But, like, the accomplishment of staying power in the NBA, mm-hmm. you start talking about anything north of five years, mm-hmm. like – the numbers would bear that out. Like that's hard to do, man. No, to to hard. make it in this level for that long is crazy. Oh man, it is. It is hard. There are a lot of great players, a lot of good players that that hasn't lasted. Yeah. You no, know, for 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 very long in this league, it's it's hard. You no, know, it's, it's it's a very tough thing to you know last in this league. And yeah, I'm I'm excited to be one of the guys who who's going. You know, my my, my goal is to play as long as I can. And I mean, at year eight. And the way I'm feeling, hopefully I can, you know, keep on going. Yeah, I'm you've had. A, I've been telling people like people saying, "How's Kemba doing? What's Kemba look like?" I said, "Kemba looks excited." Like I said, I mean, you're always you always got this personality about you, but I feel like, you know, you're you're ready for for year number eight. You're ready to see what this is going to look like, and you know, you've been as frustrated as anybody, so you want to get back to the playoffs. But yep. yeah, I feel like you've got this excitement about yep. getting this thing started, maybe at a level I've never really seen from you before. Yeah, I'm. You know, I think it was more so from last year. Um, you know, just just reflecting on last year over the summer, uh, really just feeling like, you know, I could have done more to help my teammates as long as other guys. I mean, as well as other guys. You know, you know, we all could have done something different last year because I thought we had a really good team last year, and you know, I thought we should have been in the playoffs, obviously. So, you know, I feel like you know, as one of the better players, as 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 one of the leaders on this team, that. You know, there were just a few things that I could have done better, and 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 I did it. And you know, I kind of reflect on it over the summer, and it's made me a, it's made me better, you know, as a person, um, and as a leader. And you know, I'm just bringing the energy. You know, I I I, I want to have fun with my teammates this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I want it to be great energy between us and. I want us to do everything together. Um, I just want to be a really together team. And um, that's what I'm trying to establish early on, especially throughout this preseason, throughout this training camp. You know, just trying to establish the, uh, you know, uh, a bond, you know, a really unbreakable bond between me and my teammates. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to do that each and every day in practice, you know, bring great energy, which our new coaching staff, they bring great energy as well each and every day. You know, we have great, great practices each and every day. The level never drops in practice, and that's how it has to be. And, you know, like I said, as one of the leaders, you know, I have to be the one to to to, to help, you know, the coaches um, you know, on the court. You know, I'm, 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 I'm the extension of the head coach, so that's what I'm trying to do each and every day on a consistent basis. Maybe that's not even that you're uncomfortable with it, but that's like, that's something I think everybody, as you mature in life, mm-hmm whether you're managing a group of people in a, whatever company you work for, right? Like you've got to become comfortable with whether that's reprimanding people or holding people accountable. Right. And like yeah. you said, it comes from a good place, but I think like for you, that's probably been something each and every year we've seen you grow more and more, mm-hmm. but you're still trying to get to that level. Yeah. Right. Like that's yeah. the, I think probably one of the toughest things. Oh, for sure. You know, um, I've always been a guy who, who, who who's led by example. Um, and you know, leading vocally is tough. You know, it's, it's always tough because you don't want to say the wrong thing to guys. Um, but you know, sometimes it is uncomfortable, and that's and that's what I've learned over the years. Um, you know, sometimes things can get a little bit uncomfortable. But you know, for me, it's, but it's that's always, okay. I think, yeah. right? Like the good. Yeah. I feel like in life, the the comfort, the discomfort leads to 
the growth, right? Mm -hmm. Like you got to, if you are always living in your comfort zone, you're never going to step out and grow and get better or challenge yourself. So in the moment it stinks, right? But afterwards you're like, you know what? We needed that or I needed that. Like Nick had talked about the first practice when Tony was with you guys and you're running five on five and like he stopped things right away. It's like, that's not happening here, right? I wasn't here for that. I heard about it though. Yeah. I heard about it and um, I was excited about that. And that's the kind of stuff that we need. And, and, you know, being around Tony for such a short time and I've seen him do it. Um, you know, not only that first practice, but he's been doing it you know, over the course of the training camp and film sessions, um, you know, even coming to me one-on-one, talking to me, um, helping me out so much. And I think that's where I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Um, it's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable sometimes because, you know, coming from me, I, it's, it's not coming from a bad place. Um, you know, I just want the best, you know, for me and my teammates. And, you know, whenever I say something to one of my guys, I mean, no matter, regardless of how I say it, you know, I just, like I said, I just want the best. So I think my, I think my teammates know that. They they know. So, you know, I love being around these guys. You know, they, they allow me, you know, to, to be a leader. And um, that's what I respect so much on my teammates. Is, did you ever, when did you reach the point, I should ask you, in your career where you realized no longer were you the one looking up to other guys, that other guys were looking up to you? Do you oh. remember, like, a moment where it hits you, like, Oh man, they're looking to me to like make the play now, or oh, they're looking to me for guidance, or oh, they're looking yeah. for me for advice, or yeah. Do you remember when that hit yeah. you? Um, the year we lost to the year we lost to um, Miami in the playoffs. The following year, yeah, the following year. You know, I think I think that year um, was when I really started to realize, like, you know, guys are really like looking at me a little bit different. You know, I had a great, great um, season um, that year. Um, Great playoff run. Then the following year, I made the All Star game, and um, I think from then on, from then on out, that's when I really started to realize, like, realize, like, man, like, people are really, you know, counting on me. Yeah, you know, people are really looking for me. You know, when when we're going through adversity, um, but, you know, sometimes you know, I would, I would, uh, I would have, I would be kind of moody sometimes. You know, um, you know, I'd be frustrated because we lost. And, you know, or, or or something off the court would be bothering me. And I would realize, like, I can't, regardless of what's going on in my life, yep. whatever, regardless of what what's going on, I can't, I can't show it. I can't show it because as I go, my team go. And, um, yeah, I think that was, that was the year I, I kind of remembered. I, I kind of I kind of started to notice that because I'm like, damn, I'm down. Right now, I'm, people I'm feed off of that. Yeah, yeah, I have no energy, and and my whole team doesn't have energy. So I'm like, what? Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? And you know, who kind of made me realize it was was my coach, um, Steve Hetzel. Yeah, um, you know, who was my guy. You know, we, we got really close over the years, and he told me like, like, bro, you can't, you can't, can't do that, that anymore. You can't, you can't be that way anymore. You know, you this team goes as you go, and. You know, if if you have the if you have the face where you look like you you, you don't want to go today, everyone's gonna have that same face. Um, everyone's gonna have that same energy, and you know. So yeah, I, that's when I kind of realized it. So take me back to growing up in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. When when did when did you first have a basketball in your hands? Because oh, basketball man. is life in that part of the world, man. <laughs> so when when was when was your first um, interaction with the game of basketball? I'm not even sure. I know, well, when, when I was when I was real young in the Bronx, we lived on University Avenue, and I can't remember how old I was, but I was really young, really really young, and I had a basketball. I was dribbling, dribbling, and I, I lost the basketball, and um. Somebody hit me with a bike. I got this scar right here on the side of my nose. It's really, it's really small. But I've had now it. I can see it. Yeah, I've had it for you. since then. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's 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 how long I. That's that's kind of my first memory. So that's the start of your handles. Like, yeah, I can't yeah. ever lose the ball again. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. And my mom could tell you that story. My dad could tell you that story. But it was actually a friend of the family who hit me with the bike. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean. Got this scar on the side of my nose, and I've had it for it since since I was super super young, and um, that was kind of the start of, I guess, basketball for me. Yeah. But I mean, I've always loved it. Just, just, just fun, you know, just fun, competitive. 
you know, when I lived live on university, we we played on we played on crates. You know, we had like we had a park with just like a brick wall, and it was a rock wall actually, and just a crate on one side and like this. So we played. So you put like a they had like a milk crate or milk something crates. was like t- was crates. attached to the wall. That milk was your hoops. hoop. That was the hoops. That was the hoops. And that was the hoops at the time, and that's that's. That's what we play all the time. Yeah. Uh, yep. On university, I, I remember that. That's who did who played. who did you watch growing up? Were you one to like model your game after anybody, or were no, you like no? Really, I feel like I wasn't like when I was that young. I wasn't even watching. Like I wasn't watching. I would literally just go outside and play. Like just people, just my friends. Like we just went out and played. That's yeah. It. That, that just that's just what we did. We went to the park and we just played basketball in the crates. We just shot, played basketball in the crates. Twenty one. Whatever, two on two, three on three, like that's it. Do you have a theory as to why New York City is the mecca of basketball? I mean, we got we got courts on every corner, <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> every neighborhood. Yeah, like, like in my in my neighborhood where I'm from, Soundview, we we have a bunch of different courts. So you know, I grew up in in Sacramento houses, and we had a court literally right behind my building. Um, which is the court that I got a chance to refurbish a few years back. Um, then down the hill, we got a court. It's called the Big Park. Um, sometimes, you know, when we wanted to play, you know, people from from the projects, the other side of the project, they'll say, hey, get your five, I bring my five, and meet us in the Big Park. Yeah. So we'll go to the Big Park. And then the other the, the other guys from the, from the back of the projects, they'll say, Come to the jungle. That's what that's, what we, that's one of the courses called the jungle. So they'll say, "Bring your five right <laughs> to the jungle," and you know we'll go back to the jungle and, and play basketball back there. So you know we just have a lot of different basketball courses around the area, like different neighborhoods, and we'll we'll always go to different neighborhoods and play. So that's that's just just what it is. And then I think too, like okay, so the talent level is really high, and then also I think you mix in. Like if you're not good and you lose, you, you're off the court, right? Oh, yeah. So like yeah. if you want to play, you got to be good. You and you, you, otherwise, you ain't playing again yeah. for a while because somebody else is getting some run. Yeah, but at first I wasn't even playing. Yeah, <laughs> at first they would kick me off when I was young. I used to hate it. Like I'd be shooting around and you know the older guys come on the court. Like I like, get off the court, little man. Like <laughs> what age were you at this point? Uh, maybe like like middle school, like junior like 11, high. Okay, 11, 12. And these are high schoolers or guy even guy grown men. Grown men, yeah. Grown men, yeah. This is grown men, and then I mean, some some high schoolers, yeah, of course, yeah. mixed in, but for the most part, grown men. And uh, I just remember, I, I remember when I was, I want to say eighth grade. Eighth grade is when I kind of started to get better, started to get better, and then and they start picking me. They started to pick me, and that's when that's when things started yeah. to get a little bit different. Things started to get a little bit different then, and um. That's when I kind of started to take it more serious when I was in eighth grade. Um, you know, my, my junior high school coach, Coach Nickerson, he always he always pushed me, always pushed me um, to become a better player. So, yeah, eighth grade was really when you know, I started to take a turn you know, in basketball. And then you go play for Rice, which is, yeah. I mean, one of the great programs in yeah. New York City. Yep. I mean, you're playing the best of the best every night, every you know? night when you're on the court. So, like, this is the thing with, like, I'm asking you if there's a theory, like, I wish somebody would do some sort of like study into this because I think it's all of these things, right? It's this, it's this centralized population in a small area where, unlike other places, all you got is basketball, right? Uh-huh. Like you don't have all this green space in New York City to go play yeah. football yeah. or soccer. Yeah. It's basketball. That's all we got. Yeah. And then it's iron sharpening iron. And then, as you said, like you're younger, you're going up against grown men. Yeah. And then when you get to that level of high school, it's a bunch of other kids who have done this exact same yeah. thing you've done, yeah. and you're going at each other. True. So it's like <laughs> it's this thing that just like exponentially. If you rise to that, mm-hmm. you get to the height of high high school basketball in New York City. Like, yeah, you're somebody, man. You've no done question. something. It's not by luck. It's not by yeah, accident. It's by straight work. Straight work, man. Like like you said, like I wasn't like coming to high school. I wasn't even like I wasn't even like one of the big name guys. Like I was just just Kemba. Yeah. Know, just, just one of the guys coming in, um, you know, and we, we had all the big name guys, especially my freshman year at Rice, man. We it was it was unbelievable how many how how many talented guys we had coming into our school. So, you know, we I definitely had to work hard to to stay and you know try to 
you know, make the, the varsity team and mm-hmm. things like that. I didn't play varsity my freshman year. A lot of us didn't. That's, that's just something that you don't even do in New York. Like, yeah. Which is crazy. Like, you know, you have these big name guys coming in, but, you know, freshman is a thing. You know, freshman basketball, that's, it's, it, it, it was huge back in the day, you know, to, 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 to play freshman. Um, so, yeah, that's what we did and up until our sophomore years when we, when we all made the, the varsity team. So. so you start getting recruited. But I looked at your recruiting profile, and I don't know, maybe I'm like wrong in this, but like I saw St. John's, right? Mm-hmm. They they offered you, I think, yeah. Cincinnati. Uh, there are a few other programs. UConn, obviously, where we'll talk about that. But who else, was there any other like um, like blue UConn. blood programs that came after you, or or was it schools like that? Cincy, St. John's, Providence, Providence, yeah. Uh, Arkansas came on pretty late. Um, Miami, yeah. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Did you give any other thought to those schools, or was it always UConn for you? Uh, it was pretty much always UConn. Yeah. yeah, I remember like, I remember one time <laughs> we we were in Gaucho's gym, and our coach, one of our coaches, um, he sat us down in the circle, and he just he went to everybody. It's like, what's what's your dream school? Like, asked everybody, like, what's your dream school? So I told him UConn. Why? What was it? Just uh. Just um, just the just the players who went there. Like, I was a, I was I was a huge Rudy Gay fan. I yeah. loved the way Rudy played when he was in college. Like, so always watch him. Like, just love Rudy in college. So, like Ben Gordon and you know just so much history and of course Coach Calhoun. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't. Yeah, that was just one of the school. I'm just like, man, yeah. I would love I would love to go there. It just look it just looked like they competed. It's close to home, right? You knew you were yeah. going to be in the Big East yeah. tournament at the Big Garden. East. Yeah, and I wanted to, I wanted to play in the Big East. Yeah, I wanted to play in the Big East just because I know how competitive that that conference was. I just wanted to be in the Big East, so I was I was definitely going to choose a school in the Big East regardless of of what it was. I'm trying to imagine you now, like in an Arkansas jersey in the <laughs> SEC. Like some, that does not seem right to me. Nah, nah I could never yeah. picture that. <laughs> yeah, man, those games too, like. It's. I mean, I know the Big East is still around. It's not quite the same anymore. Yeah. It's still really good. Yeah, it's not the same. But anymore. man, what what were those days like? Where it's, it's like on a Monday night, Big Monday, man, you're hosting was, Cuse or you're hosting oh you name them. Like my freshman year, man. Oh, my freshman year was unbelievable. It was like, it was literally every single night. Yeah. I, I want to say like nine, ten, ten or something like that. Nine, ten teams made it to the tournament that year. Yeah, it's crazy. Year. It was like it was crazy. West Virginia, Syracuse, Pitt, Marquette, Georgetown. Man, listen, it was <laughs> Yeah, it was a murderous row. It was it was seriously like just just unbelievable. My freshman year we played against Syracuse, of course, in the six six overtime game. Mm-hmm. I had to call Johnny Flynn the whole entire game. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like he ran me through a million pick and rolls. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And he was he was such a good player, man. I love playing against Johnny Flynn. The Big East was, it was great. It's not the same. No, it's not, not the same. Not even close. It'll never be the same yeah. again, which is, like, it is what it is. Oh, Louis, I can't forget Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. I can't forget Louisville, man. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was crazy. And then the magic of five games and five nights. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, I'm not, a national championship is so special. Yeah. So special. But, like, that, which jump-started, because that was, what, 11 straight wins, right? 11 straight wins. 11 straight to close it. But, like, that Five games, five nights in that building. Who you did it against? The heroics of it. Of course, like cardiac Kemba really came a lot. Like that's mm-hmm. the start of it. I feel yeah, like yeah. for the national stage. <laughs> like, what do you remember? Mo- like I, again, like I know the championship run is super special, but yeah. like, can you separate the two and think about like, man, how special five games and yeah, five wins I mean, and I five nights? Yeah, I do all the time. I, honestly, I always tell people that I think the Big East. I think that run was to me. It was, was more special than, than the NCAA run. Yeah. Um, honestly, whenever we finished the um, whenever we finished the uh, Big East tournament, I, I I really had the feeling we were going to win the national championship. Did you really? Yeah. I'm like nobody. There's no way. It's no way we don't play against Big East teams. It's no way these other teams from other conferences are beating us. And you guys weren't going to get in the tournament if you didn't do that, right? Like <sighs> probably, probably not. not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Would you guys have like 17 or 18 wins? I think like. Yeah, we were. Going into the tournament, going we into the Big we East were tournament, nine and nine in the, in the Big East. Yeah, I think we were nine and nine. We were the ninth seed, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we were ninth seed or eighth seed, whatever. But yeah, it so was, you're playing on a two starts on a Tuesday afternoon yeah, against the Paul, and then it ends on that Saturday night. Yep, yeah. Paul, 
Georgetown, Pitt, Syracuse, and Louisville. That's the way it went. It was, yeah. It was unbelievable, man. I, to this day, like, even me and Jeremy, like, we talk about it. It's like, yo, I can't. I, we still, like, we still can't believe, like. In the moment, we were you guys, like, as a team, were you, sure, sure you were aware of, like, how crazy it was, but, like, were you aware that, it, like, people were, like, ESPN, Sports Center, all this stuff, or were you guys trying to, like, block out the noise no, and just. I think we were, but for the most part, not not really. The only thing that we were aware of was that each and every game, each and every game, they said we were going to lose. Yeah. Each and every game. Oh, so that like, stuck with you a little bit. No okay. question. They're yeah. like, oh, there's no way they're going to win. Win. Okay. There's no way they're going to win. There's no way they're going to beat Louisville in the chip. Win. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was crazy. Like, they just, they didn't believe, which was fine with us. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I love that. I love being the underdog. And then you go and you win six in the tournament. Yeah. I think I, this is why history, like I always say, history forgets, like, the fine details, which is great. It's mm-hmm. a great thing. That was one of the ugliest national championship games no you would have question. ever seen in your life. No question. Like one of the like at halftime, would yeah. you guys have like forty points combined? I don't even know. It was. It was no. Oh yeah, yeah. It was like twenty. It was twenty-two twenty. Yeah, mean, like it was yeah. a terrible like game yeah. in terms of like if you're looking for high scoring or all that yeah. stuff. Like you guys were just clutching and grabbing yeah. and leaning on each other. Like honestly, trying to, man, I was exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> I was exhausted. Yeah, and I had a high ankle sprain from the game before against Kentucky. So I was like, I was hurting, man. Honestly. Did people know that? Was that like an injury? Was that uh, on the injury report or no? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> they don't I don't think to so. Tell. DeAndre yeah. Higgins, he got me. Oh, man. But yeah, I mean, it was ugly. Yeah. It was ugly. Um, To this day, everybody tells me, also, especially my teammates. Frank warns me of that all the time, how ugly that game was. But I always tell him that. Tell him you won. Exactly. He did. Oh, I tell him all the time. Yeah. yeah. I tell him, oh, I got the ring. At the end yeah. of the day, we got the ring. So it was ugly, man. But you know. Butler, they were a great defensive team. Great as team. well as we. Yep. We were we were a great defensive team. It was two defensive teams just just gutting it out. The yep. last game of the season, the last possible game of the season. And you know, we pulled the win out, which was all we really cared about. Nobody yep. nobody remembered the score or anything at the end of the night. So yeah, it was it was unbelievable though. And and Gordon Hayward was on that Butler team, but you're you're now assistant coach. Ron Norad was no, on no, that he team. Wasn't. Oh, no, wasn't Gordon, he? Gordon was gone. Gordon was gone. Yeah, he was Norad gone. was on that Norad team. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. I played against. <laughs> I played against Norad. Sixteen, and under Peace Jam Championship, we beat them. Okay. And then, I played against him again. Natural Championship yeah. at Butler, and now we're together. Isn't so, that crazy? Yeah, he remembers all that. <laughs> yeah. That's my man, though. But yeah, yeah, he he was definitely on that team. It was him and um and Shelvin Mack, you know, mm-hmm. two standout guys. So so take me back to that summer, right? You come out in the you come out in the draft. Um, what do you remember about like? Again, the doubting, right? Like mm-hmm. it creeps in again. People start doing the scouting reports and bringing you in. Oh, he's too small, or he yep. can't shoot, or he's not going to work in the NBA as a point guard. He'll yeah. never be a starting point guard in the NBA. Like I think I know a lot of people have already forgotten about all the stuff that people said about you and doubted you. Uh-huh. So, what do you remember about like when you started doing individual workouts and the things that GMs and scouts were saying about you? Um, honestly, I remember. I remember one GM told me <laughs> I won't say his name I won't even say the team okay he basically told me he was like I don't think anybody's gonna like playing with you that's what he told me he straight up said that yeah, he said, to your face any, yeah. he said I don't think anybody's gonna like playing with you and what was his reasoning for that um I guess he didn't feel like I was a, I was a I was a point guard he just thought you were gonna get shots up yeah. and you couldn't get other guys involved yeah. okay which was fine with me I didn't want to go to that team anyway <laughs> oh, <so>. wow was this <laughs> a team kidding. that picked ahead of the Bobcats <laughs> Uh, yep. Wow. Yep. They did. Which was fine. You know, I, I didn't, it didn't, it didn't bother me. Like, I, like, all right, fine. Well, you say it didn't bother you. You, it didn't bother you, but it did fuel you, right? Oh, of course. How, how can it? <laughs> how can it? Like, you know, that's, but it was as expected for me. You know, I, I I'm not going into a meeting and thinking like they're going to think the world of me. You know what I mean? So it was whatever. Um, I just knew for a fact. That I would prove this man wrong, mm-hmm. and 
that's all I've been doing all my all my basketball career, all my life, just proving people wrong. Well, Michael Michael was a big fan of yours. Yeah. So he was he was staunch of like, you know, I think the thing with Michael as as any great player, right? Like if you're wired different, and when you see some of those things in another person, you're like. Yeah, like that guy's got it, right? Like you can't put your finger on that, whatever it is, but you like you can look at somebody and say, "This kid's special," mm-hmm. and he thought that he thought that about you beyond all your skills and your talent. Like there's an X factor here that I'll I'll go down swinging with this guy if he's on my team, mm-hmm. and he he wanted that, which was crazy to even hear, <laughs> which was crazy to even hear. Um, but yeah, Charlotte wasn't was my first workout. Yeah, that was my first workout when I came when I came out. First team I, I worked out for, I, I didn't, I honestly didn't ex- expect these guys to even pick me, because um, you know they traded up, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, my agent didn't even know. Like, you know, usually the agents they they have an idea. Yeah, and my agent was like, man, like this is honestly probably the first time where I have no idea where one of my one of my guys is going. So when did you know when you got the call on draft night? Like, uh, hey, they're trading yeah. up and they're, they're trading well, they to get traded you. up, and he was my agent was like, hey, I I I think this is. Probably where you're gonna go to this next pick. It was like the pick before. He's like, I think you were. And you could see, like, I think when the camera panning on me, I was, I was like, I kind of, I think I, I kind of had a feeling, but um, but yeah, it was. I was, I was excited. I, I had, I didn't care where I went though. You know what yeah. I mean? I didn't care, man. I just wanted to get in, and then you know, show, show what I can do. And um, but you know, I was very blessed, you know, to go number nine. You know, which is, which is pretty high. Um. So yeah, man. No, it was it was exciting. though. definitely one of the best moments of my of my life. And then you come in, and it's just. I mean, I don't know if you can have a more trying rookie year than what you have oh. seven and fifty nine. I mean, <laughs> like I say to say this to you all the time, like to go from seven wins to forty eight wins. Just, gosh, that was what three year from year one to, to year three year yeah year year four year four. That, year four. So in three years, you go from seven wins to forty eight wins, like. It doesn't happen, man. Mm-hmm. Like that's that just doesn't happen. And a lot of that is, I think, like the losing takes a toll on a lot of guys mm-hmm. that you, they just don't know how to recover from mm-hmm. it or don't know how to deal with it, or they become this is the worst part used to it. Like mm-hmm. they become comfortable with mm-hmm. it. They become comfortable with the lifestyle of like ultimately, I'm an NBA player. I treat this as a job. Yeah. You become detached from the losing, mm-hmm. and so it doesn't bother you that way anymore. But Losing never got okay with you, no. so like you found a way to like <laughs> nah. to to come out on the other side better for it. I took it as just a point in my basketball career as going through adversity. Um, that's what it was. Now, I've been winning my whole basketball career, man. Like high school, you know, we we always you know had a winning record every year. Um, college, we always had a winning record. Um, you know, except one year we didn't go to the, the, the tournament my sophomore year, but. But you know, for the most part, yeah, I've always just been a winner. You know, mm-hmm. Just a winning player. And you know, those win those that 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 rookie year was was crazy. And I'm glad I had the guys you know, on my on the team to go th- to go through that, you know, because there was a bunch of great dudes on that team. You know, if if there were some bad guys on that team, it wouldn't have been it would have been even worse. Mm-hmm. So but at the same time, I mean we still only won seven games. Yeah. <laughs> and um but yeah, you know, regardless of how many games you won, I always, I always worked on my game, always. Um, you know, my rookie year, I was with uh, Chris Whitney all the time, and he made sure he made sure that I was always in the gym, along with a few other rookies. Um, but yeah, he always made sure that I was in the gym working on my game, teaching me new things, and you know that I was blessed for that. You know, and that's 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 what I love the most is that regardless of the wins and the losses, I always stayed in the gym working on my game. Um, I knew things would get better uh, for me um, at some point because, you know, uh, just just because of the hard work that I, that that I put in, and I always trust in my work. Um, just because I, I love the game, I love to get better. Um, I just love to play. You know, I just have a lot of passion for this game. Um, so, yeah, man, that's that's all it was, man. I just 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 believed in my hard work. Um, as well as you know my coaches, which regardless of the coach I had, they always believed in me as well. And um, yeah, man, that's that's that's. But that's mean. that's like a battle, I think, to find the balance of okay, I can't take every loss because 
even on a shortened season, like, okay, you're playing 66 games, mm -hmm. losing's going to happen. Like, even if you're the best team in the NBA, you're mm -hmm. going to lose a handful of times at yeah. least, right? Yeah. So you can't live and die with every loss, but at the same time, you can't become desensitized <laughs> to the losing, right? Yeah. So, like, that's a battle. you got to find the balance oh, between that. It is. It's, it's really, really – I don't know if people understand how hard it is to – to win it, one one NBA game, game, yeah, like it is really, it's tough. Like you know how many games I've been in, up twenty, I mean going to the fourth quarter and and lost, like <laughs> because guys, yeah, they can they can score just in, in in a heartbeat, like it's just it's crazy, like it's so hard to to win a single NBA game, man. I remember you guys against the Spurs. This was twenty fifteen sixteen mm -hmm. now. In San Antonio? Well, oh, in San Antonio, but here in yeah. Charlotte, we had, I think, seven points after the first quarter. Remember this? Yeah. I think they were up like 22, 23 points at one point, but we had seven after the first. It was the lowest points we had ever scored mm -hmm. in a quarter in team history. And we couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. Yeah. And then Lynn got hot. Oh, man. That's the game we won. Yeah. That was the first time I ever beat the Spurs. I played terribly that game, I remember, but Jay Lynn. Yeah, he put, every, like, he put you guys on, yep. the, on his back. Yep. And... I think yep. it was the largest blown lead in Popovich history. But it's to your point, it's like, yeah, okay, could you play that game a hundred times? How many times does that happen? Maybe <laughs> once, right? Yeah, just once. But it happens, <laughs> and that's the NBA. Like it's just yeah. so hard to 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 win a game, yep. even when you're up by that many points. Yeah, man. It's you know, guys can score really fast and you know, when once you get a once you get a little rhythm going, you know, on both ends, you know, things can change really fast in our league. So yeah, man, it's 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 hard, man. It's so hard, especially on the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it's just a tough thing to do. I mean, you got to be prepared. When do you remember the first time the word, whether it was a coach or like a front office person, said to you, use the use the word efficiency? Oh man, when when was that first time <laughs> you heard that word? After my rookie year, um, GM he told me, you know, I wasn't efficient enough. Would you did you even like uh, understand what that meant? No, I'm like what. What is? I mean, I, I knew what it meant. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, what? Like efficiency? I don't know. I don't. I don't care about efficiency, man. Like, <laughs> I don't care about that. I just want to. I'm just trying to win the game. Yeah. That's it. Um, if I, if I'm going, if I'm 0 for 10, and then I go and hit the game winner, that's all I care win about. the game. That's it. We won the game. But you know, I get it. You know, I get it. You know, things things change when you when you're a really efficient player. You mm -hmm. know, life. Life has definitely changed for me on the basketball court, being a, a, a much more efficient player. You know, you know, guys just they just guard me different now. They guard me differently. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely remember that that first time. Just you know, you have your end of the year meetings, and um, yeah, that's when it was. That's when it was brought up to me that I had to become more efficient. So. And then you go in the lab with Bruce Kreitzer, mm -hmm. and you start working on your three point shot, mm -hmm. and. What was the first summer where you're like, okay, I'm dedicating myself just to like that? Mm -hmm. Was that four years ago? <clears throat> How long was, ago was that? Five years ago? That was four. four yeah, four years ago. I want to say that was the year. That was 2015. Yeah, because you were coming off that season, you shot 30 percent from three, mm -hmm. which seems like crazy now in hindsight, yeah. right? <laughs> And now you've the last three years you've shot over thirty eight percent on yeah. average over the last three years. Yeah. But you're one of the best three point shooting players in the league now. When you mix in volume and percentage yeah. efficiency, as yeah. they like to talk about. So yeah, that that summer you went from being a thirty percent three point shooter yeah. to being a lethal thirty eight. There were stretches where you're shooting north of forty percent for long stretches at a time. Yeah. Like it clicked. So how many shots a day were you getting up back then? Oh, I don't even know. It, it wasn't really it wasn't really the Number, it wasn't really a number thing, it was more. It was times where we weren't even shooting, <laughs> it, so it was more technique, technique, um, footwork. Um, yeah, so it, it was just more getting used to the shot change. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, we moved my shot over a little bit to the right. Um, so yeah, it was it was just more getting used to the shot change, which. Which was a struggle. Were you tr were you like able to trust him and like okay I know what you're talking about I know this feels unnatural but I trust I'm gonna trust you here or not was really. that a struggle? <laughs> not really. I'm like Bruce, what are you, what's going on? Man? I, I did not want to do it. Like, I mean, at first, yes. I mean, yeah. I'm like, all right, he's good. This guy, he's gonna help me. You know, Bruce is gonna help me. He's gonna help me become a better shooter. Then, 
you know, as the t- as time going, I'm I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm missing. You know, in practice, I'm missing. Just trying to get this shot down packed. And um, I remember going to um to coach. And I'm like, coach, I don't I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. I want to go back to my old shot. You know, um, because I because coming into that year, I felt like I all right. I was like, okay, I'm probably gonna I'm ready to shoot the ball better. Like I'm ready to shoot the ball better. Then we hire Bruce and coach yeah. is like Coach Cliff is like, Kevin, I want you to work with Bruce. He's gonna help you. Like, please just trust him. Then I went to coach, I'm like, Coach, I can't do it. Um, yeah, I just wanna go back to my old shot. I'm I'm just not comfortable. He's like, Kemba, please, like just trust me. And you know, me and Cliff had a great relationship. Yep. So I'm like, All right, coach, it's like, I'm gonna trust you. <laughs> I'm gonna trust you. And then, you know, I just kept working with Bruce and yeah, man. Things it worked things, out, man. It worked, man. I owe Bruce my whole contract. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I owe that man everything. Yeah, you know, he's he's helped me so much um, to become a better shooter, and you know, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, yeah, man. He's he's he, he he was the best. He was the best. We put so much work in. Um. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember the beginning of the season, man. When I when I. I I want to say we played. I can't remember who it was, but I hit like I think I hit about three threes, and from that point now I'm like, damn, it just it it's just gonna work. Yeah, it just yeah. felt so good. It just felt good. It felt different. Um, I was starting to get comfortable. Um, yeah, man. And that point out, my numbers started to rise, yeah. and it was crazy. It's just like you said, you know, they show me the first time they they use the efficiency word to me. They show me. You know where I ranked, and um, you know in shooting, and hey, I was you know in this percentile with the mm-hmm. guards, da 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 da. And I was super low, like oh man, I was like just at the bottom. And then next year, I'm like almost at the top. It was it was unbelievable. And then the next year, you know I am at the top. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm top ten and three points made, and this and that and that. And then things just started to change, which was which was crazy. You made more threes last year than any other player in the Eastern Conference. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> you had 264. You made more than anybody. Oh, really? And you, and you did it shooting I, 38%. Yeah. Last that's crazy. Year. It is. It is. It's, it's crazy. So that's not just getting up a bunch of shots. Like, that's getting up a bunch of shots mm-hmm. and making a bunch yeah, of shots. Yeah. Like, man, when I see stats like that, I, I can't even believe it, honestly. Yeah. Like, I really, really can't. Like, to see me up there when it's like... Five guys is like Steph Curry. Well, James. James yeah. is number one, of course. Well, I tell you this stat all the time, which is over the last three years, you've averaged 22, 5, and 4, basically, mm-hmm. shooting 38% from three. And the only other guys to do that are Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and Kyrie Irving. You're one, you're one of four guys in the entire NBA. Right, so you're talking about saying. like usage, right? High mm-hmm. usage player and having the efficiency from the three-point line, yeah. like – you're as good as it gets in the it's NBA ridiculous. right now, man. It's ridiculous, man. Like it's hard work. It is, and I tell people all the time, man. Hard work beats talent any single day, man. And yeah, I, I take pride, I take pride in in putting in, in putting in work and, and becoming better. Like I'm 28 years old now, and I, to this day, I still feel like I can become better. Like everybody always say, you know, once you get to a certain age, you know, you know, you kind of. You don't get better. I don't believe in that though. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I always always think that there's room for improvement. Like for me to this day, you know, there, there there's room for improvement. There, I don't do everything well. You know what I mean? And I strive to, you know, you know, perfect my craft in, in any way possible. Well, let's we'll wrap up with a few things here. So talking about getting better. This new coaching staff's coming in. So here's, I think, like the next evolution of Kemba Walker is, okay, you've shown you belong in the NBA. You've shown you can get better and you're one of the best players of your position in the NBA. And now it's how can we make life even easier for Kemba, Mm -hmm. which is let's face the floor, right? Let's take the ball out of his hands and let's get him higher quality looks too, right? So let's like, let's find better shot locations on the floor, right? Um, I think you've spent a lot of time this offseason working on Something you've already worked on a lot with mm-hmm. Steve Hetzel in the past, but getting even better at it, which is like finishing at the rim, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. that's an area where you can, you can improve even more. Yeah. You're yeah. good. You can get even better at yeah. it, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the next evolution I think fans are looking for, Kemba yeah. Walker. Um, yeah, that's something I'm looking to get better at. Um, 
well, more efficient at. Uh, you know, I want to get the those numbers a little bit higher at the rim. Um, yeah, you know, in between game floaters and and things like that. Yeah, me and Coach has worked on to work on a ton, and we even I even got better. You know, you know, with him, you know, he's taught me a lot of things. You know, about getting in there and you know finishing in the paint, and you know now I'm just trying to improve on it a little bit more. You know, now I'm working with Jay, of course, mm-hmm. Jay Hernandez, who's a guy who I've been working with since I was what the first time I worked out with Jay, I was 19, I believe. So. You know, Almost a, a decade. Uh, yeah, we got a great relationship. So, um, yeah, man, that's that's definitely one of the next steps. As well as you know, getting my teammates involved. Um, that's another. That's another. That's another step for me. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe getting getting more assist. Um, well, I want to win. I want to win. Um, I want to get back to the playoffs, man. It's it's nothing like the playoffs atmosphere. So that's most definitely. The next step for for me and this and this organization, you know, we we want to consistently win and get into the playoffs every single year, and um, I think we can do that. And then I, I want to be the one to, to to help start that, and um, I think it's possible. You really love Charlotte, no question. Why do you love Charlotte so much? This is where I got my chance. This is where I got my start. This is who believed in me from day one. Fans, um, I mean, they they love me. You know, as well as I, I love them. You know, even when, like I said, when times were were were, were really rough, like, you know, they believed in me. Um, the organization has believed in me. Um, you know, they could have easily got rid of me when I was shooting thirty percent from three. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, they gave me time to to develop. They gave me time to grow. They gave me time to become a better player. And, I mean, look, I mean, now I'm a, I'm a two time All Star, um, which nobody done. nobody in this world. Nobody in this world can say that they knew I would be a two-time All-Star in the NBA. And, yeah, and this is where it all happened for me in, in Charlotte. And, you know, like I said, you know, we just haven't really been a consistent, you know, winning organization. And I don't want to I don't want to leave and then, you know, things get going or, you know, maybe things might get worse. Mm-hmm. You know? I, don't, I don't want that to happen. I want to be here and I want to I want to I want to I want to establish no winning organization. The thing I love is you've been so adamant about that. Your comments throughout the summer were, you know, people saying, "Okay, you're gonna put on a Knicks uniform." You're like, I, you know, I just can't see that personally, right? <laughs> like, I just can't visualize that. And yet, it's and this is what we do. Like, people put their desires, like we we impart that on somebody else because other people could say, "Oh man, I could see Kemba doing X, Y, and Z." That means he should do it. Where it's like, no, you've been adamant. No, this is what I want to do. Ultimately, I've still got to make a decision. We'll see how that looks. But I love Mitch, too, where, like, every step along the way, the more Mitch has gotten to know you and be around you mm-hmm. and see you. Like, I remember when he first took over, he said, look, I just got here. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. And he's ar- I don't think fans understand he's around all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> every practice, he loves basketball, yeah, right? Like, does. that guy loves basketball. <laughs> he's a junkie. He's sure. a junkie. Yeah. And, like, as he we've gone on, he's now saying Kemba Walker – Hornet for life, like Kimba Walker retire, end his career as a Hornet. And when you hear words like that, like, have you thought about that? Uh, to be a guy, because that doesn't happen very much in today's yeah. NBA to go beginning to end with one franchise yeah, on one man. uniform. Have you thought about that? I would love that. Love that. Um, yeah, like you said, it, it just it doesn't happen much. Um, it doesn't happen much. And, you know, I hear people say, you know, I see, I see all the chatter, you know, guys – People were like, oh, he can, he probably wants to stay in Charlotte just because that's where he can get the most money. No, <laughs> like no, that's that's not what it is. Um, you know, he he's never going to win in Charlotte. Well, they don't know. Nobody can see the future. Nobody can. So, I really want to be here. Be just I, this is really just where I want to be. So, you know, hopefully we can we can get something done. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I love my teammates. Love my coaching staff, a um, bunch of great, great people, great coaches. Um, I love the energy, love our training staff. I mean. And your family's here now, right? Like, I think that's the other thing a lot of people haven't realized is, like, yeah. you're building a home here. Like, you're, you're, all your family's here. Like, yeah. I know people, New York is home. Yeah. It'll always be home. Yeah, but, no like, it's like anybody in life. Like, you go away to college and then you go yeah. settle in somewhere and, like, you start the next chapter in your life. And, like, Charlotte's become that for you and your family. And, yeah. 
God, I think everybody loves seeing your mom behind the bench every game. Oh, man. Even when she's, you know, <laughs> support, you know, she's talking to everybody, you know, like this, that, that there's, there's an attachment, I think, to the city that runs deeper than just, oh, this is the team that drafted Kemba. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, like you said, my whole, my whole family is here. My whole family's here. You know, we, we know the city now from like yeah. the back of our hands. I mean, my sister has been in Charlotte. Way before I even I I wasn't even got drafted to Charlotte. Uh, Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, it yeah. was like a crazy, crazy coincidence. Like, yeah, it was it was really unbelievable actually that that Charlotte drafted me. Um, yeah, you know I grew up coming to Charlotte like back in the day when I was young because my aunt lived here yeah. in Charlotte. So yeah, man, it was just it's perfect. Crazy. Yeah, it was just very. It was a huge coincidence, but like you said, my whole family's here. Um, we're just so attached to the city. Um, you know, I don't know if any other player can go to the mall and not really be bothered. <laughs> like, 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 I go to the mall all the time. You know, just no hoodie, no nothing. You know, maybe just a hat, but. And you'll you know, get stopped, but you're not getting, like, yeah, mobbed. I'm not getting mobbed. Yeah. Of course I get stopped, you know. Of course I get stopped here and there. But for the most part, not, not, not much. Yeah. Not much at all. I'm walking through the mall, you know, just. So regular, and I love it. Well, maybe not after this podcast, because no. now people are going to know. All right, I'm going to start stalking the mall and see where Kemba's at. Uh, I hope not. No, no. But we'll, we'll, we won't say what mall, okay, so people don't know. So the other thing is with JB, as he's come in, this coaching staff, I just love, like you said earlier, the energy. Mm-hmm. It's such a young staff, too, so I feel like you guys relate really well overall as a team. And fans don't see this, but like music's playing when you guys are warming up. Mm-hmm. After practice, during drills, yeah. um, you know, everything in, in practice is a competition now. Yeah. It's like you guys are doing shooting drills. Everybody breaks into groups. All right, who can knock who can knock them down the, the, the fastest, right? Yeah. Um, I think that little – it sounds small maybe, mm-hmm. but I think little stuff like that to, like, make people fall back in love with the game mm-hmm. and fuel that competitive fire yeah. again. Like, all that – that's a, that means a world of difference, I feel like. No question, man. Everything is competitive. I mean – everything like we are ready to like you guys go at each other man. it's so funny like the jawing that goes on in practice man. and shoot arounds with you guys man it's like whenever somebody lose it's like piss on the yeah. sideline like like i'm playing <laughs> we starters against you know the guys who come up the bench you know yep. the bench the bench guys they come in and just kill us sometimes yeah you know, we were just we we're pissed and we're not getting calls in practice like just like that just small stuff shooting drills you know just competing and i saw biz know. what was this we we're in boston right that saturday uh-huh. you guys had practice yeah and you might have left at this point but they were wrapping up some guys for point five on five and biz blocked a shot like i mean great block uh-huh. textbook biz and they late whistle right uh-huh. And Biz loses his mind. He's like, oh, that's, uh, I can't repeat some of the stuff he said. He said, you got to be kidding me, right? Yep. You got to be kidding me. And they're like, Biz, we're just trying to like, actually, we're just trying to recreate some game scenarios yeah. here. So like, don't get mad. But he was, he was legitimately yeah. ticked because he's yeah. like, look, man, I blocked that shot. Yeah. That would have won the game. What are you doing? It's the final yeah. possession. Yep. But I love that's good. Yeah, man, you know what it is? It's that it's going to be carryover. Yeah. You know, it's going to be carryover into the game. And that's, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, we compete and practice against each other because, you know, we know that we're going to compete against the best. Well, if you can't go exactly. hard with each other, how are you going to go hard against somebody else, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. So you know, and I love it. I love I love competing against my guys because it's it's giving me it's showing me how much they love the game, how much they love to compete, and you know that I know that I can compete with these dudes each and every night, and that these dudes got my back, and, and that, that they're going to battle, you know, each and every night, and. That's the kind of team we have to be. Yep. You know, maybe I don't think a lot of wins are going to be pretty. You know, there's going to be some really ugly wins for us. That's okay. You know, but it's fine. A win is a win, and you know, you got to grind for your wins. You know, you got to grind for your wins. You know, it's a it's a tough league. Like I said, it's so hard to win a single game in this league. So, you know, that's where it starts. It starts in practice, and um, you know, we we got that. We got that competitiveness in us. Okay. And, um, you know, it definitely starts with me and. I'm going to make sure, you know, that everyone else is is doing the same. So, yeah, man, it's going to, it's going to be fun. So, what are what are the other things you got going on off the court? What are, what other interests you have? You were I know you you told me before we started. You're like, yeah, you know, you did JJ Reddick's podcast over yeah. the summer. You're like JJ's got me thinking I might do a podcast. So, like, 
Are we going to get a Kemba Walker podcast on the road? Oh, you could be man. my regular guest if you want because we're doing this <laughs> on the road. What do you? What, what other? What other things are you doing outside of basketball? Um, I'm not sure the podcast thing. I'm, I'm not sure if it's really for me. He he did when I did JJ's. It was it was so good, but I can't compete with JJ. It's not that hard though, because I don't think people realize like all we're doing is we're just talking yeah, right now. Yeah, we're just no, talking for and sure. People listening, but yeah, yeah we're just talking <laughs> right now. Nah, you I, couldn't do it, like I couldn't do it by myself. Yeah, like if you asked me to just talk for an hour, nobody would want to hear that. Yeah, they want to hear you. They want to hear me talking to like of Nick. Course. They want to hear me talking to everybody. Yeah, so you could do that, right? Maybe, Maybe. you and some other guys. Frank, you know, Frank's got a podcast. Frank has, Frank has one. Yeah, Frank has. One. I haven't listened to it yet though. Ooh. I know. Yeah, is he aware of this? Oh. He will be now. Yeah, he will. <laughs> he keeps telling me too, but I got. I got Can I? T- to I haven't listened to it yet either. <laughs> I got to listen to it. All right, we'll too. do it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> what other fashion? What other? What other stuff are you interested in? Um, oh, I love fashion. Yeah. yeah, I love fashion. I love to. I love to shop. Love to shop. I shop all the time. Um, I mean, but you know, I'm not out there. I'm not yeah. a big social media guy. Yeah. I don't like post all my outfits. Everywhere, you don't. So. You're not a big social media guy. What is that? I don't know. You I like just, your I privacy. Love my privacy. Yeah. Love my privacy. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not really into you know just having all my outfits out there like that. I mean yeah. nothing against it. You yeah. Know, but I don't know. I'm I don't know. Just it's just not me. Are you a sneakerhead? Huge sneakerhead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys, some of my teammates, they they've been in my closet. Okay. Yeah. Are you are is your shoe collection the best on the team? Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Yeah. It's funny though. Like Malik is Malik's Nike. You're Jordan. Yeah. Nick's Jordan now. Frank's Jordan. Cody's Jordan, I mm-hmm. think now. Uh, Dwayne's Jordan. Yeah. Miles is Nike. Nike. Devontae's Jordan. Yeah. So a lot, it's kind of a split. There are Billy's Adidas, Adidas. Mm-hmm. as a span as a Spanish Spanish guy, but like Malik is. Some guys will cross over. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm a Nike. But well, I've seen Miles. Miles will wear some J's. Mm-hmm. But like Malik never wears Jordans. Like he's for the most part not. Nah. I, I mean, feel like I always see him in Nikes. He played in some Jays one time. Oh, did he? Yeah. So don't let him fool you. Okay. Yeah, don't let him fool. You. He, he he like he like. Do you like touch Nike or are you like no? I'm only gonna. I'm I got only... nice. Okay. Yeah, I got some. I mean, come on now. Gotta have. Gotta have some. Like, I mean, I got like the off white Nikes. Of course. Now you've been hooping. I've noticed this. You hoop in the in the tens. Yeah. Is yeah. that your favorite Jordan to play in, or are you just no? I mean, at this at this point, it's just the only Jordan I can play. Okay. <laughs> it's just the most comfortable. Yeah. For me. Um, it's like a glove. Yeah. Like that shoe it. is so comfortable. Yeah, it's so, so comfortable. It's high enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, just really comfortable for me. I love, I just, I love them. What do you think of the new 33s? Um, They're different, right? They're different. They're different. I think it's a good looking shoe. Have you tried to hoop in it? Mm, I can't do it. A little bit too low for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really into the lows. Like what about the lacing too? Yeah, it's not. Because I've heard some guys say like it doesn't get tight yeah, enough. Yeah, it's not tight enough. So. Yeah. But they're going to they gonna work on it. Okay. They, they, they'll, they'll get it right. They'll okay. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, what's funny is like, since I've come on, it's like, you get around the game, you're like, you become, you become a sneakerhead. Oh yeah. Like there's, you just, even yeah. if you thought like, oh, I would, I don't care about uh-huh. that. Like, no, you start to care about <laughs> no, that. No, no, you, you, you care about it, man. It's, it just, it just, it is, it is what it is. Like, yeah. You know, everyone wants to have nice sneakers and yeah, yeah it just is what it is. But you know, growing up in New York, in the Bronx, when I was, I mean, that's. Well, you can never afford it. Kids. Like that's how I was as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like I was one of five kids. You maybe got like one new pair of mm-hmm. sneakers for school every year, yeah. and you better make them last, right? <laughs> like that's how it was yeah. in my family. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's how it is. I mean, I was really fortunate enough to my my parents. I mean, they they always got me the Jays. Yeah, they always got me the Jays. I don't know how, but they did. They did. They did a great job, man. My I was I was the only one in the house growing up. My my brother and sister they left. My sister was in college and stuff like that. They were older than me, so. I was very fortunate to be I was the only one. So, so you, got ba- you got baby. You got spoiled, yeah. <laughs> I was spoil you for sure. I was the middle kid, so I got all the hand me downs. Oh, yeah. That's what I got. That's the way it works. Yeah. Kemba, it is uh it is always a pleasure to spend time with you. Um, you know how how big of a fan I am of yours. And um I wish people could see just like the energy and the conviction you have when you speak. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I know our fans probably appreciate uh hearing from you and We'll get the season started, man, but I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching you on the court. Thanks yes, for dropping sir. by. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. You've 
you can catch us on the podcast anywhere podcasts are available stitcher iHeartRadio, spotify you find us we'll be there or you could find us on apple podcasts of course you could search courtside seats you could search my name kroger and then once you find us make sure you subscribe leave a review rate us up if you don't mind or on our official youtube channel for the hornets same thing search for courtside seats you could search charlotte hornets subscribe you'll get pushed all of our great video content especially throughout the week at training camp on our youtube channel and you can find us there we'll be back next week another edition right here of courtside seats